All right, today I'm going to be removing the carburetor on a Polaris Sportsman 500. This is a 2003 model. There's going to be several year models that are going to be uh, the exact same as far as removing the carburetor. And then we've done separate videos on rebuilding it, uh, rebuilding the carburetor, as well as rebuilding the motor, several different CV shaft videos, boot replacement, wheel bearing replacement. So check those videos out on our channel. Um, but right now we're going to go ahead and remove this carburetor. Here's an air duct here. Uh, we removed the seat already. We removed the air box lid already. Six clips pull this air box lid up. There is a uh, foam, foam spacer here to kind of keep things from rattling. A lot of times they'll disintegrate uh, and you will end up having to replace those anyways or just taking them off. But plastic pieces kind of rattle around here if you remove those foam pieces. Your air duct here is somewhat in the way of doing this job, but you can do it without removing it. If you want to remove it, there's a clamp clear down at the bottom, and I can show you that at the end of the video where that is. Basically, you come in from the right-hand side of the four-wheeler with a flat screwdriver, loosen the clamp up, take this boot, pull it up like this. Now, you have to kind of have a little bit more play in the fender because you got to get it from, out from underneath of this. So as you can see here, I'm not going to be able to pull that up like that. You remove the fuel tank cap, and then uh, a lot of times you have to remove a couple fender bolts in order to pull this up far enough. Now I've kind of got things loosened up right here for me to remove this and I just removed it so that you can see uh, what I'm doing here. Okay, so I've removed that air duct. Wasn't a, wasn't a tough job, but you, like I said, you don't have to do that. And next we're gonna remove these side panels. The way I do it is I'll pull up, either pull up or push out or pull out on these panels here. Two grooves out of the back here. And then I just kind of push down on it or pull up and that removes uh, the entire panel. So do that exact same thing on the other side. All right, and then we've got this panel removed as well. Set those panels aside. Now we have the carburetor kind of opened up here. Now we're able to get in here. You're gonna be able to see what we're doing. Here's a vent line here that hooks up to the carburetor. We can just go ahead and pull that out. It's just pushed into the frame there. We've got, like I said, the two 10 millimeter or 11 millimeter bolts uh, on the side here, and that goes for this carburetor mount. Okay, we've got these two bolts removed. Now what we're gonna do is take a Phillips screwdriver and there's two Phillips screws uh, that go into this brace here. Now we can leave these on um, and, and remove these once the carburetor is removed, but sometimes it's a little bit easier if that carburetor is uh, held on there to put some pressure against this carburetor and move, remove these Phillips screws. You wanna make sure you keep track of where all these bolts go. And now we have more of the carburetor exposed. I'm gonna remove that line or push that line out of the way so you can see what we're doing here. This vent line here, we can pull it off now or same thing, again, we can leave it connected until we get the carburetor removed and remove it before we go and clean it. Our fuel line that's coming in from the fuel tank, we've already pulled off here. We've shut the fuel off on the side here, this fuel petcock, we've shut it off. Here's the line here. We've got a little red clamp that used pliers. Uh, lift that clamp up. I'll show you what that looks like here. Okay, and this is what that clamp looks like here. If you grab a pair of pliers, you squeeze those clamps together, it's gonna just slide up and down like that. Now, if you're not, if you don't have a pair of pliers, you're not gonna be able to move that. So pulling that fuel line off there, just lift this clamp, take this clamp, lift it up like that, pull about that far, pull it off of the uh, inlet there. Now we've got a couple uh, clamps on here that we're gonna need to loosen up. There's a clamp that connects this duct here. So there's a, there's a rubber boot that connects this duct here to the air box and to the carburetor. And I'm gonna take a flat screwdriver and loosen that up. And I like to loosen these up quite a bit. You don't actually have to go um, and, and take them all the way. But it is nice to know that it's not gonna hold you up. So get it far enough out of there and far enough loosened up to where it's not gonna cause issues. Loosen up this other one too. And really only one of these is gonna come off. Two three eighths bolts here on the side of the air box. I loosen these up or take these completely off actually. And we'll take and remove these. And all there is is two bolts there 
And now this air box is free. We can pull it back. We can actually set it aside if you want. There is hoses connected. So you can either remove these hoses or you can just push that air box all the way back. I'm gonna take, just so you guys can see a little bit better, I'm gonna take these hose clamps off here and remove these vent lines so that you guys can see better what we're doing. I'm gonna leave that one attached and I'm gonna set that aside just like that. Okay, now we've got the complete carburetor exposed there. Okay, so we have our fuel line that's going into our carburetor there and we can just kind of push that out of the way. We've got our choke cable on this side and we've got our throttle cable on that side. That's gonna be our next challenge. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a Phillips screwdriver. A longer one is better because you gotta get in here, you gotta find a way to get in here and loosen up the clamp that holds that carburetor boot onto the carburetor. All right, so I grabbed a, a really long screwdriver here. It's about, I would say two foot long. You wouldn't need to be that long, but long enough to come in here, you could do it with like a 12 incher or maybe a 10 incher. Come in here and there's a clamp in front of this carburetor that you need to loosen up. And same thing, you wanna make sure that you're plenty loose. Um, you don't wanna, you don't wanna take the chance of uh, it holding up on there. So once you get that loosened up, you can grab the bottom of the carburetor there and you can just pull it out. Now you're not gonna be able to pull it out very far, but what I'm gonna do is pull it out far enough to where we can get to our choke cable. Grab a 12 millimeter wrench. And it actually looks like our uh, fuel line here is holding us up. So before we remove that choke, I'm gonna remove this fuel line here. And this is actually a uh, more of a vacuum line. It's, it's fuel hose, same thing as fuel hose here, but it's the vacuum line, which is here. Okay, now that gives us enough room to get in here with our wrench and get this choke plunger off of here. 12 millimeter, and it doesn't give you a lot of room there, but most of the time, uh, once you loosen it up, uh, even just, just a touch, you can take your fingers in and pull it out. Now we're able to pull our choke and our cap off of there just like that. Next thing you're gonna do, I'm just gonna lay that carburetor flat. You wanna make sure you don't damage that throttle cable. Now what I'm gonna do is take my Phillips and because we're laying it flat on its side there, we got something to push against because these little Phillips screws are sometimes a little bit of a challenge. Here's your idle adjust here, throttle cable coming in here, take and loosen these up. Sometimes these are a little bit of a challenge. What you can do if, if they are not coming off of there is I like to grab a small pair of vice grips, just a plain pair of vice grips so it makes sure they're small. And a lot of times you can get, that, uh, get those on there. Most of the time they're not difficult to pull out of there um, if they haven't been removed before. Um, but if they have been removed, a lot of times people over tighten them. So there's a the little plate there. And then there's the screws. And then we've got a, a red O-ring here that, that uh, seals up this assembly. And now there's a small boot on your throttle cable. Pull that out of the way. Okay, an eight millimeter wrench to loosen that throttle cable. Once we got it loosened, what I do is I'll take a pick, take a pick like this, and your throttle, your butterfly here, if you, if you take and turn that, you can kind of hold that cable out of there and pull up, and that pin will just slide right out of that groove there. Now we have this little brass clip here that holds that throttle cable on. Now we've got the end of the throttle cable that looks just like that. We can just take and unscrew this. Once you unscrew it, you just pull it right out of there. Now we've got our carburetor completely off. We'll go through this carburetor and rebuild and clean it now. And, and I'll show you how to do that. Check our channel for one of those videos. So appreciate you watching. If you have questions or comments, make sure you leave those below. If this video has been helpful, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that bell to get notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching.